uh, Hosea chapter 4, 6 says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Amen. Say knowledge. Say knowledge. Amen. So that means because we don't know some things, we are destroyed. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I told you the greatest way to, to, the greatest way to kill a man is to make the man think you're not trying to kill him. Amen. He will be around you never knowing that you are his assassin. So the, the devil has been really careful at causing us to believe that there's nothing really going on and this is all in our head. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But the Bible says oh, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Say knowledge. Number one, knowledge is knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number two, knowledge is knowledge of self because when people come to Christ, they find out who they are. Amen. You find out you're really a drug dealer. You was just doing that. Say amen. Because you was living in somebody else's view of you and not in God's view. You hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all there? So knowledge is what we need in order to overcome anything. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Truth. Say truth. Are y'all there? Now the Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou has rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. Are you there? So when we hear the truth, and we don't do the truth, then, and we don't do what God is saying, then he rejects us. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Are y'all there? So um, um, uh, John 8 and 32 says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Say the truth. The truth shall make me free. Say the truth shall make me free. Dancing shall make me free. Shouting will make me free. Give it make me free. Doing good things should make me free. Being a good person will make me free. Come on, I'm trying to show y'all something. That it's only the truth that'll make you free. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So enough for our enemy to destroy us, he has to keep us from the truth or confuse the truth or make the truth so unavailable that we have nothing to stand upon because the truth is what you stand on. Every real revolution is started by truth. It's truth that causes people to, to, to go against tanks and guns with no, with no bullets. It's, it's truth that causes people to lay their life down, not caring about dying because they see the tyranny is so unbearable that they would rather die than to live, under, than to live as a slave. Say amen. It was the truth that brought the call slaves to understand that we were not three-fifths human, but we were men who were reduced to being animals so that people could profit off of our misery. Say amen. So the truth is what will set us free. So the problem with, with the race, especially the, the black race, and I told y'all I'm not, I'm not against no races or nothing like that, but when we talk about, our, when we talk about the truth, they call it reverse racism because we're talking about the truth. Now, when they taught us about Christopher Columbus, it wasn't racism. When, he, when they came and, called and conquered a people and said they discovered a people's house. Wasn't racism when they came over and saw Indians living here, killed them all off, took 600 of them back to Spain as slaves, but that wasn't racism. We celebrate them. Say amen. But when we start talking about the truth, when we start finding out the truth, then all of a sudden, oh, now why y'all bringing that stuff up? Because it was the lack of knowledge that keeping us in slavery in our mind. It's the lack of knowledge that makes us be the worst and go for the worst. Smoke the worst. Drink the worst. Look the worst. Amen. Say amen. So the lack of knowledge is the problem. Are y'all there? So when we start di diving into truth, you know, never get intimidated because the truth will make you free. It will make others mad. But you will be free. Amen. All right. Now. I want to start um, a little bit in the beginning, just in the book of Genesis, amen. I'm not going to start at Genesis 1. That's all self-explanatory. I did a lot of work on Noah, amen. So what I want to start with, where I really want to talk about Noah, amen, because when I first read the Bible, I told you my mother had a big, you know, that big gigantic Bible on the coffee table, under the table, somewhere in the house, Amen. And I remember being a child, I grabbed it and I started flipping through the pages and I started looking at it and I saw the pictures and, and you know, I saw Moses and I saw Abraham, say amen. I saw David killing the lions and Daniel in the lion's den, say amen. These are pictures that stuck with me as a child. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I saw, um, then I uh, saw certain movies like the commandments and I saw that Moses was was a white man and the, the children of Israel were white the Egyptians was white 
Come on, the Egyptians was white. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Moses was Charleston Hep, Hep, uh, uh, Heston. Are y'all there? Then are y'all there? I saw that when I was a child. So the 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 cover, the front cover on the Bible was a white man with long hair and blue eyes. And so I, I figured that God was white. Why? Because that's what they said he was. Say amen. I had no I had no knowledge to didn't know how to study, wouldn't have knew what book to go get to find out. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Other than the Bible. Say amen. Now there was nothing wrong with the Bible. It was something wrong with the interpretation of it. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? So uh, then I grew up a little bit and I saw the story of Jesus. Amen. And Jesus was white and broke and ran with 12 white broke cats. And everybody else in the Middle East uh, was, was, was broke. And when he went into Egypt, he was white and broke. Say amen. You know, and so uh, I, I assumed that, that he was white. I remember the, the passion of Christ came out. And so, you know, so I saw a white man that ran with 12 white men that went about loving people and healing people. Say amen. Now no, matter, uh, now, no matter what color he was, I loved him because I knew what he'd done to me. Jesus was an experience. It wasn't a color with me. It was an experience. So I loved him. If he was white, I loved him even though he was white. If he was Chinese, I would have loved him. Say amen. Because he has the power to take away sin. He has the power to forgive me, keep me from a devil's hell. Say amen. Love me so much that he would die for me. So that's where my love comes from. But I had to learn to identify. See, there was, I needed to identify with him. And I thought, you know, from what I was shown, he was white. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Now, it's very important that you understand this because not only did I think Jesus was white, I thought the whole Bible was white. And I thought we were just the bad cats. Black, uh, uh, the black people in the Bible were the curse race because... Uh, when uh, I'm, uh, Noah, after the flood, y'all remember Noah, Noah had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. And Ham, were the, uh, from the descendants of Ham, come the Cushites or the Ethiopians. Y'all hearing what I'm saying? And the, because the Bible says Ham went, Noah was drunk in his tent, and Ham went in and saw his father's nakedness and went out and showed his, told his brothers to come and showed his father's nakedness to us. And Noah woke up and cursed Ham's son, Cain. Say, man, Ham had, I believe, four sons. It's Canaan, Miserum, Put, and uh, Cush. Are y'all there? Oh, Nimrod, was it? Was it? Yeah, Cush. It was Cush. Now, um, now, the way that scholars have taught this, now, what you have to understand is the way our history works is um, people that have taught history already have a view of what history is supposed to be. So if I am if I am supposed to be superior anything I find out that does not uh, uh, back up that I will not tell you or I will cover it up say amen so uh, our history was taught to us by people who were racist themselves are you understanding what I'm saying and you say what's it got to do with church everything the, it's the truth that's going to set us free I want to know the whole truth see I used to study the Bible and didn't see any of this stuff because I didn't, I didn't think it really mattered but if it really didn't matter, then who thought to change black people to white people on, in a movie? Who thought? Who thought to paint the picture of Jesus Christ? What gall and boldness do you have to change the picture of who he, what he looked like to make it look like your race? So if it wasn't, if, if it was no issue there, then why did, would you make him in your image? Why couldn't he have been Chinese? Come on. Why couldn't Jesus have been Indian? Why do he have to be, why did he have to be the color of the people who wrote the book? Amen. So when we went to school, we learned about, come on, 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And he just discovered the new world. Say amen. And we learned about Cortez, how he just went down and got all the gold out of, you know, like what nobody living in these places. Are y'all there? Now, the reason why I want to start with Noah is because we need to understand that Noah had three sons. Say three sons. Now, it's very important you understand that Noah had three, all his three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth, by his one wife. You got to understand that because if you don't understand that, then you will think that um, he had children by different women. 
Now, depending on the children, the women would have been the mixing of what race, they would have mixed their races. But the Bible says Noah was perfect in his day, which means Noah had pure DNA. He had not been mixed up, so he was still with his wife. His sons were pure. Say amen. Come on. So because his sons was pure, when Noah had sex with his wife, they produced three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Say amen. Now the Bible says Ham had a, uh, Noah had a son named Ham, and Ham, we know that, that the Cushites, he, he had a, Ham had a son named Cush, and Cush is Ethiopia. Come on. Now, what I want to tell you is, how does a white man have a son that is black? When the Bible is telling us that the Ethiopia, Ethiopia is the only land that is still there, that has still had the same people in that land. You can trace Ethiopia way back to Nubia, which Nubia was the city up under Egypt. And they were black. The Nubians were black people. The Nubians are Cush's people. Cush comes from Ham. Come on. Ham had another son, the Miserim. Miserim name means bondage. That's what they called Egypt. So, so Egypt comes from a black man named Ham who had a son named Bondage. So Ham had a son named Miserim who, who was the brother of Cush and Cush was black. Say so, amen. So I, me and my brother have the same mother and the same father and I, we look same. So if the Bible's telling me that Cush was from Ethiopia, is where we get the Ethiopians, Miserum is where we get Egypt, then how, are, how was Noah white? Come on, I told you I'm going to teach you. I want you to think. Y'all got, got to feel me because I'm going to take some turns. Y'all there? And you say, what's this got to do? Identity. The Bible says in the last day, truth uh, uh, knowledge shall be increased. We need to know. Our race was turned on his head and made to be the scourge of the earth because our history was hijacked by people who keep wanting to go back say they took the pyramids. So I tell my wife yesterday, I said, you know how it was history channel? Oh, they won't leave Egypt alone. It's every five minutes, it's Egypt, Egypt, Egypt. Egyptology, not the, they're not trying to, it's not the study of Egypt. Egyptology is them trying to refute the evidence that's there. Say amen. So when they dig up the mummies, and the mummies don't, ain't the color they want. Say amen. Are y'all there? Then they don't talk about that mummy. Or they, or they give you a recreation of what they might have looked like. And all of a sudden, they, get, they turn into these European features. But the, the, the hieroglyphs on the wall shows what they look like. How we have been bamboozled so easily when the hieroglyphs, you know, the cave painting. And you see, if you study Egyptology, they have chiseled all the face off of all of the, all the hieroglyphs. Because somebody went through that whole land and robbed all them pyramids and went in there and saw, you mean to tell me the people we got enslaved right now built this? We can't, uh uh, we're gonna have to destroy the image of these people because a man will never, these black folk will never be slaves if they find out they built this. Now, when Egypt was built, the white race was in caves. Now, you know they say the first man came from Africa, right? They called him the Neanderthal man. Yeah, y'all there? The Neanderthal man does not have African features. The Neanderthal man has European features. They are the cavemen. When they was in the Caucasus Mountains, in the caves, which are the, these are the descendants of Noah's other son called Japheth. Are y'all there? Japheth and his descendants 
went up to Magog and Gog and now all that's up Russia and Asia. So they went up to the cold places. You notice the dark skins is down in the south of regions of the earth. The white skins is up in the northern regions. Amen. Are y'all there? Now, um, um, now let me give you a little bit more before I get on. Now, uh, Egypt, of course, uh, now, now, hold, let me go back. Now, you remember Noah. Now, when I first saw Noah, I saw Noah in Sunday school. Noah built the ark and had all the animals on the ark with the white Noah. You don't understand how powerful it is for you to believe that all of these supernatural powerful people were not your color. So what happens is a person changes history and teaches it to the next generation. They believe it as truth and it gives them an air of superiority. Say amen. But now because of archaeologists and we have studies and these scrolls are being found, we're finding out the truth. Are y'all there? Now, um, now, 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 okay, now, I want to show you something because I want to prove this throughout the Bible that the Bible was a book about black people. Predominantly, it was about black people. Did y'all know black people, was, uh, that, that Chinese people come from black people? Black people were the ones that taught them Kung Fu. It's black people that taught them that. We are the ones that learned 50 blocks first. Now the problem that you got to understand is because black people, now, you know, we were worshiping wrong God. They were worshiping the sun god, Ra. And that worship has gone all over the world. I'm going to teach y'all something about that was, is what Babylonian worship is all about. Yeah, I don't have time to go into that. Now, so, um, now, let's talk about Abraham because I want to get y'all into Abraham. Now, now, this is the picture of Abraham. You ever seen the picture when Abraham took Isaac, somebody drew it, up to the mountain and he was great. God told him, uh, slay your son. And he, you know, and there was the picture was he had a knife up to Isaac and it was white Isaac, white Abraham. Come on. This is important stuff because this conditioned us to, to think we were not in the Bible. Therefore, we went looking for another religion to identify with because we needed some blackness to figure, come on. And that's how we got into Islam and Kemet and Egypt worship and New Age and all that stuff because we were looking for to so identify, not realizing the Bible was all about us. Are y'all there? Now, Abraham is key to understanding the color of the Bible. He was the father of many nations. Genesis 17 and 3 says, Abraham fell on his face. God talked to him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. And thou shalt be a father of many nations, neither shall thy name any more be called Abram. Come on, get some love. Brandon, man, come on, man. Come on, man. Oh, yeah, we don't want this message to go out. Come on, man. We're going to edit this. Let's go. Yeah, there you go. Let's get this back. Gonna get this back. Come on, say, teach me something. That's what I. That's, that's good. You good, bro? You good? That's what I. Des, that's what I long to do. I don't want to shout you down. I want to teach you something. There's young cats in here that need to understand that we're not serving no white man God. Say amen. The white man had a God. He sits over in Rome. His name is the Pope. He says he's God. He says that's the God. Come on, man. Let me talk a little bit more about that then. Um, now the 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 the, the worship. Um, now I'm gonna teach y'all something about all worship comes from the same place, except when we're worshiping Jesus or uh, uh, and worshiping Jehovah God. Amen. All other worship comes from Babylon. This is very, you got to understand this. Babylon was paganism. It was an old priest system where only the priests could get to God. Amen? Are y'all there? Now, I'm telling y'all this because 
Abraham was lived in the land of Babylon. Are y'all there? Now, this I want to show you something before I get there. Now, uh, now God's telling Abraham that you are going to be the father of many nations. Come on. You, Abraham, come on. You, Abraham, are going to where all the nations are going to come from your seed, Abraham. Say amen. Now, now, the controversy surrounding the Cushite African black orig origins of the Elamites, Sumerians, Akkadians, Assyrians, which is Mesopotamia, keep that in mind, is simple and yet complicated. It involves both racism exhibited toward the African slaves in the Western Hemisphere and Africans generally, which led to the idea that Africa has no history. And the need of Julius Oprah, it's very important to make Semites white. The Semites are the Jews to accommodate the white ancestry of the European Jews. So somebody knew the truth, had to change the truth to back up their race. Come on. Come on, y'all got to get this. Now, remember that Abraham lived in Ur. Come on. Abraham lived in Ur. Now, we know where did civilization begin? Come on, y'all been to school? They taught us some stuff. They changed the colors. It began in Mesopotamia. The Fertile Crescent. Are y'all there? Babylon, the Babel, the Tower of Babel, where Nimrod, the son of Cush, built, built the Tower of Babel, was in Iraq. Modern day is where modern day Iraq is now. Come on, y'all there? Now, this is very important because we know the Mesopotamians were black based on the cave, I mean, based on the, the building drawings. We know they were black people. Say amen. Abraham, let me give, Abraham's father was named Terah of the, of, the, of the Chaldees. He lived in Er, Er, you are. Y'all there? Give you a little more. Now, Terah lived 70 years and begat Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. And these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begat Lot. And Haran dies before his father, uh, Terah, in the land of his nativity, in Ur, it's important, of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abram's wife was Sarah, Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Aska. But Sarai was barren. She had no, ch no child. And Terah took Abraham, his son, and Lot, the sons of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai, his daughter, in law, his son Abram's wife, and they went forth from they went forth with them from from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came to Haran and dwelt there, and the days of Terah were two hundred and five years, and Terah died in Haran. Now, the Lord, this is Genesis twelve, the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, from thy father's house. Why? Because they were worshiping idols. What idols? Well, come on, what was they worshiping? Baal. Baal, remember, where was they living at? Babylon. Where modern day Iraq is, which is Mesopotamia, it's the Fertile Crescent, the whole region. Come on. The Fertile Crescent meant because of the, you know, they had fertile land right there. Y'all there? Now, let me show you something. Now, I need a point stick. Right here is Ur. It's where, it's where Abraham lived. Right here is Sumer or the Sumerians. Now we know the Sumerians were black. Come on. We know the Sumerians were black. Now Ur, I mean the uh, 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 Abraham comes from Samaria. Y'all there? Come on, y'all there? Now, now Babylon is up here. All of this is the same region. All of this photo crescent was the same region. So how you how do you get white people? Even the people that's there now are not descendants. They're not Semitic. Let me give you a little. Y'all, is this too much? Now this is a, one of the drawings 
in one of the palaces uh, over in, 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 the, in the Mesopotamia. This is what Abraham's color looked like. You see how brown this cow is here? That's how brown he is with his beady beard. Because that's what happens to us. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all there? This is important to know. I'm trying to paradigm shift your mind. Because we've taught our children this is a white man's religion. Say amen. This ain't got nothing to do with white people. Our, our, our identity was hijacked based upon greed. Let's go. Let's unravel the lies. Y'all there? Now, Julius Opert, uh, he was a French German Assyriologist, uh, which was the, one of the first Egyptologists, was born in Hamburg of Jewish parents. He tried to link the Sumerian people with the later settlers of, tu of Turanians of the, mo of the first and credit modern, modern day Iraq. Turan or Persia is the, per is, a, is, is the Persian name for Central Asia, literally mean the land of the Tur or Turkey or, or Turks, which was Muslims. Are y'all there? This is what he done. Now, you say, what is that? Why is that important? Because he went to Germany and France before America had these big universities and started teaching this because he was an archaeologist. He started teaching that the people that are there, that, that, the, that the original people of that land, the Bible people, say man, he started teaching that they were the modern people that were there in his time, not the people that were there in ancient time when the Bible was written. Come on, get this, this concept. Because he was trying to change history so that his people would be the Semitic people or the people that really had rights to land. Now, now, now this ain't no Hebrew Israelites teaching this. This is white men teaching this. British archaeologist Henry Rollins is known primarily as a ling linguist of ancient languages and is and considered by some the father of cuneiform. Come on, say cuneiform. That's the first language. Who, who, whose language was that? Samaria. This is what uh, 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 Abraham people them was writing. At this time, Europe was in the dark age. They, they, as a matter of fact, they was in caves up in the Caucasus Mountains when we were writing. We knew algebra. We, come on. We, we rescued them from the dark ages. Where they was dying of disease because they had superstition against water. Look it up, not lying. They, they, the, the, the king of England did, had only took three baths in his life. Why you think the Bubon, Nubian plague was wiping them out? They said England stunk so bad. Europe was so funky because they, they, they didn't understand hygiene. And the blacks, the Moors that came down, that caught Spain, the black people, came down into Europe and, and, and they ruled Spain and they was ruling parts of Europe. They all want to tell y'all about this stuff. Black people, the Moors, look them up. They were ruling Europe. And they brought down the, the, the aqueducts and the sewer systems and the languages. Because the al alphabets come from the cuneiform. So we are the ones was reading and writing first. We became slaves and they told us, don't read no. I wonder why it was so important to keep us from education. Like even now, the Negroes are so slow, they think they making it because they out in the reselling crap. You are ignorant. They keeping you from the true knowledge by keeping you shining, dog. And you're ignorant. And they destroying us and we repeating curses because we shining. Because a black man with education, knowledge of who he is, knowledge of who God is, the most dangerous man on the face of the earth. See, I'm dangerous now. I wasn't dangerous when I was out there with no guns. Oh, now I'm dangerous. Because instead of me blowing your brains in, I'll blow the chain off your mind now. Sets a man free. It's the truth that makes us free. Come on. I'm teaching this to get our mind up. To stop this inferiorness. And recognize that our people are lost. Because they don't know who they are. And it, we, it was systematically done. Everything I'm saying, write it down and go study it. I'm not making up. That's why I could have chose some black scholars, but I didn't. I know I'm mine. If I'd have chose black scholars to prove it, then oh, well, that's because black lady, we, we, we think racist. 
Hard to be racist without nothing. You ain't got no power. You can't make no law. So I had to go get white and Jewish scholars because y'all believe the white people. That's why we condition now. Are y'all there? To let them teach our children as if they're going to teach your children better than their own children. And that's why our children are so inferior in academics because they're teaching our boys and girls something different. They're teaching them European history and European knowledge works in white world. And we have knowledge of self that work in the black world. Because not only do we got to know what we know about us, we got to know what we know about you because you are the one that got everything we need to get. But we ain't learning that. That's why we didn't know nothing about it when we was in school. Didn't know a lot of stuff. Now we in trouble because nobody taught us. We wasn't made to succeed. 